this one dish from Jessica Jab. Continuing our series on Indian players who played exceptionally well in the 44th Jazz Olympiad, today we'll be looking at three of the top tactics employed by uh, Indian Grandmaster Arjun Arigashi uh, playing for uh, the main Indian team, that is India 1. Uh, let's dive right into it and take a look at the three tactics that he employed. All right, so this is round three. It's uh, Arjun Arigasi playing the white pieces versus Matro Vasilis uh, Athen Athanasiosis uh, from Greece. Uh, this is this is around move forty two, and this is one of the winning. This is the winning, uh, you know, series of moves that that will ultimately lead to that will directly lead to Arjun's win in the in the match. Um, this is move forty two of the game, and as you can see. Um, the opponent has the, the black black player has played like uh, king to king to h8 as the last move. Um, here you can see that there are a lot of threats and a lot of uh, you know discoveries coming from this uh, this knight over here because the queen is uh, right behind it and the rook is there. Um, <coughs> the, the knight was dividing the two so far, but as soon as the knight moves, not not here obviously. <laughs> um, here or here. Um, there's some nasty discoveries that the rook opens up on the on the queen. Um, so building on that, uh, Arjun plays knight to h4, uh, of obviously opening up this discovery. But um, Athenosius was uh, was prepared for this. He's like, all right, uh, you come after my queen, I come after yours. He captures the pawn on e3 with with rook captures on e3. Uh, so he not only gains one point, one pawn with his. Uh, which uh, disturbs the material equilibrium between the two, but he also attacks the queen. So he's like, okay, you take my queen, I take your queen. It's a queen exchange, and I got a pawn in the exchange. But Arjun has thought this through. He's like, all right, I'll have it. I'll let you have the satisfaction of one pawn uh, for some time, but I'll have the last laugh. Let's see. So rook captures on f6, rook, rook captures on g3. The queens are exchanged, then they're off the board. Rook to c7. The rook infiltrates the seventh rank. Um, and it's beautiful, beautifully placed right now because the king is boxed in the corner. Um, it can move, it can go over here, but it cannot go any further. Uh, the, the, the only square that the king has is this one now. And the two rooks on the sixth and the seventh rank are just looking monsters. And the knight can, knight can just infiltrate any time to, to you know, these maneuvers. Uh, the bishop is doing a brilliant job controlling the the square, uh, white light square here. Uh, when there are no assets, no immediate threats against the white king, it's perfectly safe on h1. Um, so yes, this move rook to c7 is a brilliant move by Arjun. Um, let's see what what uh, Athenasius is placed. Uh, pardon my pronunciation if, if I pronounce it wrong. Bishop to e6 was played by black. Um, and this this isn't really this doesn't really do much. But again, uh, black doesn't have much to play. Uh, as expected, the knight comes into the game. Knight to g6 check. Uh, knight captures on g6. Rook. Uh, I'm sorry. Bishop captures on g6. Also attacking this pawn. Uh, this rook on on e8. Um, rook to c. Rook to c8. Offering an exchange. Obviously, uh, the black would like to exchange the rook so here because this rook on this the seventh rank is just a monster, and you know the king is really boxed in this rook, this bishop, and this. Uh, other rook on the same rank, they're making a deadly combo and they are uh, threatening checkmate any time, any, any, any time. Um, so it is, it is good for the black to exchange pieces, but obviously uh, Arjun knows better than that. He's like, no, I'm not going for the exchange. I'm not letting you all get out of this that easily and, you know, let you slip into a draw. That's not happening. So rook to h7 check, the bishop on, on g6 protects the rook. Uh, the only square that the king has left is uh, g8, g7, so g8, so uh, the king goes to g8, uh, rook to a7, bishop to g4, the black really doesn't have anything, any play over here, um, it just has to wait for uh, white to deliver, either deliver the checkmate or, you know, uh, make a blender or, you know, uh, play for a draw at the best. So bishop to, bishop to f7, check. And the king only has the king has actually two squares, a uh, three squares in fact. Uh, all these three squares are available, but uh, for some reason black decides to go for the absolute worst of the of the 
uh, square is uh, king to h8 and now checkmate is unavoidable now um within one move <laughs> uh the opponent resigns so obviously a bishop captures on d5 and in this position uh master vasil is athenas has resigned his, his game because checkmate is now checkmate is now unavoidable uh, rook to g no sorry rook not rook to g7 um rook to h6 is checkmate because then uh, the king cannot go here because of the rook the rook controls the entire file the rook cannot even go here because the bishop beautifully controls this crucial diagonal and there's nothing that can be used to block the check although here you know uh, the black can give up some material in an exchange of a delayed uh, delayed loss uh, something like i don't know something like uh, bishop to f f uh, f5 but then the rook just captures it or like rook to uh, rook to c c7 but that doesn't really do anything because the rook captures and then we will check get mated the next move so yes this was the this was the position in which um, uh, black resigned and arjun won a brilliant game uh, all based on the knight on the queen sacrifice not queen sacrifice the queen exchange and the one pawn that he let go over some somewhere over here um so yes that was the first tactic that by by arjun in the fourth quarter chess olympiad this is round 5 of uh, the chess olympiad it's arjun versus peregrinus mircea emilian from uh, romania Again, Arjun is playing white. He always opens opens with the queen's gambit. Um, he did the same in this game as well. And this is move thirty one. Um, as you can see, the last move that the black black uh the last move played by the black side was was f six. Um, here uh, uh, Arjun says, okay, uh, we are we he senses that we are nearing an end game. Although there are too many pawns on the board. One, two, three, four, five, six pawns on the board, uh, on both the sides. Um, there are the only pieces that are left are two minor pieces against six pawns and a king. So it is almost, uh, it it almost qualifies as an end game. And Arjun is like, okay, yeah, I better bring, I I better bring my king into the end game because well, kings do have the most crucial role in the end game. So he starts marching his king towards the center of the action, and uh, so king to f two. a uh, king to e8 a passive a rather passive move by by the opponent um king to e3 this is the move that um that helps arjun in winning the game ultimately it seems like a no brainer but uh somehow i don't know somehow balegras uh, doesn't see this coming or uh, if even if it does he doesn't think it's much of a threat um, but yes but yes we'll see how so king to e3 Uh, obviously, you have to move your king because it's it's being at, attacked twice. Uh, your knight because it's being attacked twice and it's only protected once. Um, so uh, knight to g two check. Uh, king to f two attacking the knight and providing the check. Knight back to f four. And okay, here <laughs> Arjun doesn't go for king to e three because then knight will come back to g two and then the king will have to come back to f two. And like they'll just risk uh, a draw by three fold repetition. And Arjun is like, no, I'm not in the in drawing mood just yet. Um, so he goes bishop to f3. This this is sort of a uh you know waiting move because this move doesn't seem to do much for Arjun. Uh, the bishop was much active here, you know, attacking the attacking the knight. Um, not that this diagonal is much um you know much useful, but uh still the it it was much much more active square for for the white for the bishop of light square. But okay, bishop to f1. King to d7, king to e2 now, because now now the the knight cannot come to g2 because of the bishop. So that was the idea that uh, Arjun had behind the bishop move over here on to a less active square. But now now uh, now the opponent has decided what to do with the knight. He cannot just mess around or fool around. You know he has to do some real thing, real stuff. So he decides to back up his pawn with a uh, back up his knight with another pawn. That's a that's e5. And uh, this is exactly what Arjun wanted him to do. Arjun takes the pawn on g5 with his h pawn, and obviously uh, you have to take the material back, otherwise you lose your knight. Um, e takes, uh, sorry, f takes takes on g5, and now comes e5. This move was vital for vital to you know, uh, sorry, this move was vital to give some protection to the pawn on d6 as the king was about to capture it. And now that that now that there is a pawn over here, there's no way you it's it's going to. 
uh, this beautiful porn uh, couple is going to go anywhere uh, anytime soon so this was basically the motive of uh, arjun when he played this this seemingly passive bishop to f1 move and um yeah basically he, the game just uh, continues and uh, there's nothing much that that uh, the black can do over here these um these two these two pawns are just too 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 strong you know to uh, hold um for the black pieces so yes this is the game uh, ultimately arjun does go on to win this game because these are two very strong pass pawns and uh, they let's like take a look at the at the ending position um yes it was in this position that uh, that paligras uh, mercy emilian designed because these two pawns are just monsters there's nothing you can do about them uh and these two bishops are doing a brilliant job of guarding them of boxing the king and you know the king can just march any time inside and just you know secure the square these these squares um so yes these two pawns uh thanks to thanks to arjun's uh, you know uh th thanks to arjun's foresight uh, they they win the game for uh him moving on to the last tactic that we'll be covering in this video by arjun it's round 11 india versus usa a big big match um uh, it's arjun versus uh, dominguez perez lenier lenier um again arjun is playing the white pieces he again opens with uh, with the uh, queen's gambit as he does with as it is every time he plays bl uh, white pieces the last move that black made here was knight to f8 and again uh, arjun plays b4 over here uh c captures on b4 and he, arjun is like i'm not i mean no hurry to capture the pawn uh he captures the pawn i'll get the material eventually the the that pawn is not <laughs> going anywhere so he's like okay let me bring my king into the game first so that the opponent cannot um right the opponent cannot even bring the knight to to c5 anymore um so king to d4 knight to f6 coming into the game and now arjun is like all right i'll grab the pawn finally now that my king is nicely poised uh knight captures on b4 knight to h5 and now now uh just a simple pawn push c5 check um king to c7 bishop to b3 um uh, bishop to b3 uh f6 just starting to mass the pawns uh d6 check um uh, d d8 uh, king to d8 uh and this is a brilliant move by arjun uh just simple harm, uh, seemingly harmless c6 move um uh, obviously you can capture but then the knight will just uh, gobble the pawn uh, on on c6 and check you it won't be pretty because the king cannot come here the king cannot go here because of the pawn on the d6 and that's exactly what happens we captures on c6 knight captures on c6 check uh, king to e8 knight to b knight to b6 uh, you are really looking the position is not looking good because this bishop is boxed in it can go here but then you just cobble up the knight uh um once you do that uh you know it will be easy to just start marking the pawn so here uh dominguez has to trade so he takes knight knight takes on b6 uh pawn takes on on b6 uh this pawn is going to uh, reach it, it march to glory very soon uh king to d7 knight to attacking the knight so knight to e7 uh, bishop to b7 king to c5 uh, knight to f4 just you know both try, both players trying to make the best of it arjun is in much better position obviously with two pawns on the seventh rank uh, so sorry the sixth rank uh, it's it's uh, dominic as who seems to be in trouble um, yes so bishop to a4 check uh, king to d8 bishop to c c6 offering a trade uh, knight to the uh, dominguez has to take the trade eventually uh, knight to e e6 check king to d5 knight to f <coughs> f4 king to c um uh, king to c4 is the knight the bishop on the bishop on c6 is nicely protected by the knight on on uh, on e7 which is nicely protected by the pawn on the d6 all the pieces in brilliant coordination for arjun and finally bishop takes on c6 knight takes on c6 check uh 
king to d7 and b7. This is the position where Dominguez Paris linear, linear resigned the game because there's nothing to be done. If you take this, the, the pawn marches away to glory. If you don't take it, uh, if you take this, the pawn marches away to glory anyways. You cannot stop that pass pawn from promoting to a queen and that's just game loss. So that those were the three tactics, tactics employed by Arjun Arigesi uh, in the 44th Chess Olympiad. He also had an unbeaten run in the Olympiad, winning six games out of the 11 he played and drawing the rest of the five games. Um, yeah, so that was that's, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys understood the tactics and that's all from my side. Thank you.